Recorder's functions are very unsophisticated. We have a switch down here for replay or record. That's in record mode. That's in replay mode. We have here loudspeaker on and a volume control. Sadly there's no sound out of this machine because the head's gone open circuit. It's quite probable that the current used um, through the head uh, is, has caused the head to go short op open circuit. But fortunately I have found somebody who can rewire these heads. So hopefully I'll have this machine up and running. All the rest of the electronics are working fine. So then you've got down here your mains on off switch. For turning on and off the recorder. And then a very simple com control. Play. Or record and rewind. That's it. One of the big problems of making a wire recorder is the fact that the spools are quite wide in comparison to the steel band, the steel wire. These arms move up and down to make sure that the wire goes evenly on the reel. But the problem is, is that they do not always line up. I put this into play mode. And then you get your wire breaking. Editing with a wire recorder is very crude. Get hold of your two bits of end of wire and you make a loop. And you tie them literally together. Not very easy. Like so. Then once you've created your loop, you then cut off your excess. Like so. Don't know whether or not you can see that on the film. We got a little lump there now where the little knots meet. Now even though this machine has only just wound the wire onto this reel, you'll hear shortly the metallic noise of the tape getting trapped. This is a common fault with wire recorders. The other problem is once a splice has been made, um, that knot of wire, which becomes quite thick, then at this kind of rate of uh, speed will go through the heads, uh, ultimately shortening the life of the heads and also sort of causing a bit of damage on the way through uh, to the rollers and things like that. You, but mainly it's the heads that suffer. Sometimes the knot's too big and it will hit something, it'll stop and then the wire will break again. There are two heads on this machine. This one up here is an array's head. It raises the wire. And this one down here is the record and replay head. One of the other disadvantages of a wire recorder is that the signal is polarised on one side of the wire just like it is on a normal tape recorder. But being wire and being cylindrical in shape, the wire does turn around which means that you do not always get the high end frequencies which means you can get in roll in roll out effect of uh, high, high frequencies on these machines. This recorder was never designed for high end music um, but it was more designed for dictation. It was designed for the military and the armed services and started life off in 1942. I don't know when the last time it was used uh, but the recorder basically wasn't designed to be used for listening to music although it was. One of the things you do have here is a line input so that you can use it from a, say for instance, a, a phonograph, radiogram um, or a wireless set. The rest, of, the rest of the machine, the only thing that comes with the machine as standard is a microphone. In the back of the machine we have the microphone, microphone stand and cable. 
then we have the electronics and the mechanics. As we can see in the back here, we have one motor and we have these two rollers. These engage and disengage, for instance it's engaged in play mode, so this one's engaged. In rewind mode, that one's engaged. Nothing complicated about the way it functions. One of the, one of the things though is that this machine is a two-speed machine. This belt here can be pulled forward on this cog and dropped so that it runs at 30 inches a second or in the upper roller which runs at 60 inches a second. As you can see from the size of these two rollers, the large, sorry, the large rollers, this one's only smaller by a slight fraction. So when it's rewinding, it's probably only rewinding around about one, one and a quarter times quicker um, than it is replaying when it's running at uh, 60 inches a second. Inside the back of it, uh, underneath the mechanicals, we have three huge transformers. The mains transformer and then the... I would have thought these were marrying transformers for the uh, audio side of things. Then we've got our large based valves and then a couple down either side and then underneath it you'll have all the, all the non electrolytic capacitors. As you can see, another, another problem where the wires banging away inside because it's um, catching on itself you can, you can see the effects on the internal rollers this makes worm flutter incredibly high This function here allows you to be able to put the tape into, or the steel band, steel wire, into play mode. And once the recorder reaches a predetermined time, which is set by the top roller, which I'll just move it on a bit, the machine will stop. And when you reset it, it starts again. The recorder has a counting mechanism. This is driven not by the reels or by the or by belts, but mechanically driven from the clockwork uh, inside it. We've got one here that's counting the seconds that are going by, and this other one that counts the minutes going by. Then on top here, you've got then another lever which you preset to when you want the machine to stop.